We have opened a new channel for those who like to look at the detailed process of creating a project. While there are only a few videos, but we are working on their creation. We promise that it will be interesting. The link is in the description. Hi friends! During my practice, I made a lot of different chargers for car batteries. As a rule, I gave them to friends and relatives. I recently needed a charger myself, and I was surprised to find out that I had none. Fortunately, I have a bunch of all kinds of laboratory power supplies, including this 70 ampere monster, which saved the situation. And then I decided to build a powerful charger from the at-hand components I have. The main requirements were as follows. Ultra high reliability and works without problems at low temperature. Wasn't afraid of short circuits and power polarity reversal. It should be automatic and turn off when the battery is fully charged. I think it is clear that there should also be the possibility of adjusting the current. Additionally, it is desirable to be able to help the battery during engine start. In other words, this will be the starter and charger. In short, I need a serious charger in a garage. I immediately decided that I would make the charger based on the good old iron transformer, which is much more reliable than all these impulse novelties. The control circuit will be no less reliable, based on thristors. The video will be in two parts. In this part, we will put all together according to circuit, study the principle of operation and check it in action. And in the second part, we will deal with the final choice of a transformer, fully assembling and housing. In short, we will get a complete device. Once upon a time, such chargers were mass-produced. Now they are forgotten, and the reason isn't that they are so bad. It's just not economically profitable. The whole world now is used to impulse technology. For comparison, here is an iron maze transformer, somewhere around 200 watt. And this is a pulse one with the same power. The difference in size, consumption of copper and iron is obvious. Respectively, the cost is lower. But as I said, I make a device for myself from at-hand materials. The circuit of the Resus 1 industrial charger was taken as a basis. I redrawn the circuit and transferred it to a modern element base. Let's examine it. It has all the necessary options. It disconnects the battery when it's fully charged, isn't afraid of polarity reversal and short circuit, and provides smooth regulation of the charging current. The original circuit is designed for a charge current of just over 6 amps. But I need one that, if necessary, gives out much more. In the circuit, I indicated the components designed for an output current of about 10 amps. But in a real device, I will put diodes and thrusters of 80 amps. Let's consider how it works. An adjustable rectifier is assembled on diodes and thrusters. More precisely, only thrusters are responsible for regulation. Thristors are controlled by this part of the circuit, which is a relaxation generator. It generates pulses of a certain frequency, which can be adjusted with a variable resistor. The signal from the generator is fed through the blocking capacitors to the control outputs of the thristors. They, opening at a certain point of the sinusoid, cut it off. Consequently, the power at the output of the rectifier changes. In fact, our circuit is a phase pulse power regulator. Due to the pulse mode of operation, the efficiency of the current is quite high. But still, power components need a heatsink when using the device at high currents. The next part of the diagram is the automation system. It is important to note that if the switch is closed, then the automation turns off and you just get a power regulator. In manual mode, with the automation disabled, the charger can work without a connected battery. There are no protections in this mode. Therefore, this mode is used only to check the operability of, for example, a light bulb or the device itself. In this case, current regulation works, but worse than with a connected battery. In this mode, the light of the LED will change depending on the current. 
In automatic mode, this LED will turn on abruptly upon the end of the charging process. With the switch open, the device operates in automatic mode. The circuit will work only when the battery is connected and will have all protections and auto shutdown. In this mode, the control circuit is powered by the battery itself. A protective diode is installed at the input. If you reverse the polarity, it simply won't open and the control circuit won't start. This is reverse polarity protection. And the short circuit protection is even easier. Without a battery, there is no voltage at the output and no matter how you short circuit the wires, you won't even see a spark. It is important to note that the circuit will start even with a very dead battery. The control system is triggered around 4 or 5 volts. Let's examine the operation of the circuit in automatic mode. The switch must be open. When the battery is connected, power will go to the automation circuit. The two indicated transistors will work immediately. Power will be supplied through the first transistor to the relaxation generator. It will start generating thristors control pulses. The power supply minus for the generator is formed by rectifier diodes. The battery starts charging and the voltage will increase as it charges. As soon as it reaches the threshold set by the trimmer, the Zener diode and transistor VT1 will open. Due to its positive signal, the transistor VT2 will close. The dual row LED will also light up. It is an indicator of the end of the charge and through it power will be supplied to the transistor VT3 and it will work. Through its open transition, the base of the VT4 transistor will be shunted to the plus of the power supply and it will close. Therefore, the power supply of the relaxation generator will stop. The thrusters will close and the circuit will stop working. That's the whole principle of work. It should be noted that in some sources there is an incorrect circuit where the Zener diode is connected incorrectly. In this case, the circuit doesn't work correctly because the Zener diode will simply work as a diode. The circuit included with the industrial device is correct. That is to say, the Zener diode is connected by a cathode to the base of the transistor. About the components. I use the more reliable medium power transistors BD139 and BD140. Maybe it didn't make much sense, but they are better than an original circuit. It should be noted that before soldering the trimmer, it must be set to the middle position. After assembly, the operation of the automation system can be checked without connecting the power unit. To do this, instead of a battery, we connect the laboratory power supply, we install 14.4 volt on it, that is to say, end of charge voltage. This may be a different value depending on the type of your battery. Next, slowly rotate the trimmer until the LED lights up. This completes the setup. I tried to make the printed circuit board compact. By the way, the board in the video has some inaccuracies with the labeling of the components, but everything was fixed on the board in the archive. Because the device was made for myself, I wasn't even lazy and applied silk screen printing and varnished the board. Now it remains to connect the power diodes and thrusters and of course the transformer. As I said earlier, I will use very powerful thrusters and diodes with a current of 80 amps. Considering the type of the rectifiers and the fact that the components actually withstand currents above the maximum values, as well as the fact that starting a car engine takes a short time, then with a good transformer such a device can start the engine, but only if not a dead battery is installed in parallel. And theoretically, nothing prevents you from inserting such powerful thrusters and diodes, taking a 3 kW transformer and getting a starter that's capable to start a car engine even without a battery. But I don't recommend starting the engine without a battery. The output voltage is pulsating and the value of these ripples can be dangerous to the car electronics. And if you have a battery connected in parallel, all this will be smoothed out. The power transformer must provide a voltage of about 18 volts on the secondary winding with a current of at least 7 to 8 amps. For the experiments, I will put the TN61 transformer. 
This is a powerful filament supply transformer with four secondary windings of 6.3 volts each. On three of them, I declared current is 8 to 9 amps. I will connect these three windings in series and it will be about 19 volts. This solution is only for testing. In the future, the transformer will be more powerful. Don't forget that we work with the mains device and comply with safety rules. So the first start of the device is done with a 40 to 60 watt incandescent lamp which sat in place of the fuse. Let's switch the device to automatic mode and see to what voltage the battery will be charged. The multimeter shows the voltage on the battery. The current clamp shows the charging current. As you can see, at about 14.5 volt, the automatics worked and charging stopped. That is to say, everything is working. The charge current is regulated. The minimum current isn't zero, but it isn't necessary for a car charger. Checking the reverse polarity protection. As you can see, nothing terrible happened. The same with short circuit protection. It remains for me to remind you that all the necessary links, including the archive with the printed circuit board, can be found in the description. Please don't forget to rate the video and share with your friends. And on this, I say goodbye. Until we meet again, with you was Kassian TV.